In this module, we're going to look at a few special WebDriver I.O. commands that make it easier to debug the test you're writing. In the final video, we'll use these commands to help write a series of real-life tests. We'll start off by looking at the debug command. This command pauses the test execution when run, giving you time to jump into the browser and check the state of your application. Once done, you can restart the test by pressing enter on the command line. Let's try it out. First, we'll add the command to our execution chain in our test. It'll go right after our click command, showing us what the page looks like after the call to action button is clicked. Now I'll save and run the test to try it out. Normally this test completes so fast you don't really see it happening. It's more like a flicker on the screen. But in this instance, the browser stops and sits there doing nothing, which is what we wanted. The page loaded correctly, but one thing I notice is that the URL in the browser contains two slashes. Looks like we don't need the trailing slash in our base URL setting. Let's fix that really quick. To get our test to finish running, hit the Enter key back on the command line. This ends the debug command and the test completes as normal. Opening up the configuration file, I'll remove the trailing slash from the two URLs we have. I'll then save the file and run the test again. Once more, the browser window pops up and pauses until I'm ready to move forward. We now see that the URL doesn't include the two slashes and looks better for it. By default, the timeout for Mocha tests in WebDriver I.O. is 10 seconds. This means that Mocha will wait 10 seconds for a test to complete running. If it doesn't finish in that amount of time, it throws an error. Since I've been talking during this example for more than 10 seconds, you can see that the error was thrown here. Usually this setting is best left alone, because a test taking too long is normally a sign that it's broken. But when we're in the middle of debugging, there's a high likelihood that we'll take longer than 10 seconds during our investigations. We can fix it though. Mocha allows you to override their default settings for timeouts. Looking at the Mocha documentation page, you can see that the option we want to change is understandably named timeout. Usually you'd set this value by either passing in the setting via the command line or having a Mocha ops file with your specific overrides in it. For WebDriver IO though, our Mocha settings are stored inside its configuration file. Let's jump back into that file and look for the Mocha Ops section. All of the options passed in there get delivered to that Mocha instance that WebDriver IO spins up. You can see we've already got one option set, which specifies that we want the BDD UI format. This tells Mocha that we'll be using Describe and It to construct our test suite. To get our timeout setting included, we'll just add a timeout property to the Mocha Ops object and use a really large number for the value. This value is the number of milliseconds Mocha should wait for a test to complete, so again it needs to be very large. Let's save the file and run our test again. With the long timeout, we can now move about the page and inspect the HTML as much as we'd like. Being familiar with the browser developer tools can be incredibly helpful for validating selectors. Let's open up the Chrome Dev Console and try it out. To get there, right-click on the page and choose Inspect. In Firefox, this option is called Inspect Element. A new interface will pop up, and I'll navigate to the Console tab. From here, I can test selectors to see if they match elements on the page. For CSS selectors, I can use the dollar sign function. For XPath, I'll use dollar sign $x. Testing out a CSS selector first, I call the dollar sign function and pass in the selector I want. Here I'll pass in the selector for my call to action button. When I hit enter, the browser searches the page for any elements that match and returns the results. If we have an element, we're good. If it's an empty array, that means there were no matches and we've messed up somehow. Now let's try this out for XPath. I don't have an XPath selector handy, so let me show you a quick way to get one. Switching over to the element panel, I can right-click an element and choose Copy, then choose Copy XPath. This will create an XPath selector for the element I chose and save it to my clipboard. Did you notice that there was an option to copy selector as well? This would do the same thing, but return a CSS selector. Now I can go back into the console and try out my XPath selector. Using the dollar sign $x function, I pass in my selector just like with the CSS one, then hit Enter and see the element returned. The result for a missing element are the same as with the CSS selector. 
Using this functionality can be a great help when trying to find the right selector, especially if you're less than familiar with CSS or XPath. I'm done with this example, so I'll jump back to my command line and hit enter to complete the running of the test. I should also change my timeout configuration back to its original value, so that I don't end up waiting forever for a failed test to timeout. This is kind of annoying to do every time I want to use the debug statement, but thankfully WebDriver.io has officially documented a solution. You can see in the WebDriver.io example, they use the debug command line flag to specify whether they want the long or short timeout setting. They also do some work to configure the max instances and capability settings. We're going to ignore that for now and stick with just adjusting the timeout value. At the top of our configuration file, we'll add a tertiary statement which checks for the presence of the debug environmental variable. If it's there and set to true, it will use the long timeout. If not, it'll use the short one. All we need to do now is update our Mocha op setting to reference this new variable. With this now in place, let's try out our tests. First, we'll run the command without the timeout. For the sake of time, I skipped ahead the video, but trust me in that I only waited 10 seconds for the browser to shut down. Now I'll pass in a debug true flag to my test and run it again. And again, I'll skip ahead 10 seconds to save you time. Even after the default timeout has passed, our test is still patiently waiting for us to move forward. To clean up, I'll leave the configuration file as is, but we'll remove the debug statement from the actual test. It's great to know about this feature, but our test simply won't work with the statement in the code. That's it for the debug statement. We'll be using it throughout the course to help debug issues with our test as we write them.